Hello and welcome to the Castile opening with guides where I will show you how to achieve this in just 20 to 30 years. How to get RB and wedding, how to get person of Portugal, conquer Northern Africa and maybe even get the Emperorship and Burgundian inheritance. The very first thing that you do when you begin the game is to get rid of this heir. Not only because he's 0001 the freaking Enrique, but also to help you trigger the Iberian wedding event. Why? Because if you get rid of the heir, you'll soon get a new one, but he'll be below 15 years old. And then, when your king dies, you get regency. And during this regency of the consort, if the rule of the Aragon is still male, you'll get event for the Iberian wedding. Nothing easier than that. You don't even have to royal marriage them or ally, but that will be really useful because they might help in Africa and other wars, and also if they have negative attitude towards you and you disinherit your heir, they might claim your throne, and that might be problematic. Second step are the advisors. If you want to go for a diplomatic game in the HRE and get the Emperorship, I will talk about that in a second, you need advisor for the prestige, because you lose out of prestige from disinheriting your heir, you need to get it up, because it's helping you to get votes of the electors. That's the same reason you should get of the diplomatic, the diplomatic reputation advisor, while on the military, the best one will be the guy for the manpower, because you will need manpower for the mission later. But if you don't have him, don't worry, just get even more out of this tipping guy. Then on the estates, from the burghers, you can't take much, you're taking money because the influence is too low. From the clergy, you're increasing the influence to over 75, you're taking papal influence, which you're investing to Curia, because Curia is giving you a bonus to aggressive expansion and an extra diplomat. While on the nobility, the influence is huge because of the amount of promises that they have, so we're just taking power points. On the navy and trade, start with choosing a naval doctrine for the capturing enemy ships. Those are free ships for you, which will help you in fulfilling a mission from Granada claims. Then take your heavy ships, send them to the Sevilla trade node to hunt the pirates. This will decrease the efficiency of raiding significantly. Then take your trade ships, send them to Sevilla, Take your merchant from Safi to Sevilla as well and change his focus on building a spy network. This will help you significantly in Iberia. Then on the diplomacy we are starting with choosing our rivals. Rival Portugal and Morocco. The third one it depends on you but I recommend rivaling England. Then use your diplomats, the first one goes to Portugal to build spy network and the other two are going to get alliances. Try to get alliances with Aragon if they are your rival. Don't worry, it doesn't really matter to get Iberian wedding, and if you want to go into the empire to be an emperor, there is one achievement to that for Spain, then you have to take alliance with the electors. In most of the cases, platinate my ally you right away, and you need to get at least three, the best would be to get four electors to vote for you, so you get the emperorship. Here, it depends a lot of luck and how it will go. Because if you go for diplomatic reputation, for legitimacy, for prestige, get alliances with the electors and you improve relations with them, you might still not be able to get the emperorship because Austria will be too strong in the empire. But don't worry, sooner or later you will be able to do that. Just when? It depends only on the RNG unfortunately. So don't worry if you don't rush it, you get that sooner or later, but if you get that sooner, you might have a higher chance to get the Burgundian inheritance, because as you can see, if you're the Emperor Spain and you have the royal marriage with the Burgundy, it's like you're pretty sure that you're going to take this lands. But don't worry, it's not like 100% that you have to do that. It's just one option that I'm showing you, which might be really strong if used perfectly. Now we are moving to our first war. The first war is against Portugal. Because for the electors you need a higher prestige, so it's a perfect way to increase that. To start the war with the Portugal you need claims on Porto, Lisboa and Ceuta, because those are the three provinces that we are going to take in the war. To start it, you should wait for the event for the main surrender, because if England attacks France, they might not join the war against the Portugal, because they are allies at the beginning. So just waiting for France to occupy the provinces, get the war exhaustion higher, and then in a year or two, they should not join the war. Of course, if England joins, you can still win that, but you will have problem to win on the navy, so I recommend waiting for England to not join. So beside those three provinces that I said, you might also humiliate Portugal to get the objective for the age and decrease your power projection for this war. On the war itself, 
try to stack my Portuguese army as fast as possible and stand on the forts with as small stacks as possible to save your manpower for later. In 1450 your truce with Granada ends, so by this time you should get the mission that is giving you claims on the lands. To do that you need a full force limit on the navy, full force limit on the military and have a huge percentage of your manpower. For the military all you have to do is to take manpower from the estate and you should have enough numbers over here. Before you start the war just remember to call provinces from the Portugal, give Lisboa and Porto to the Burgers to increase their influence and take the diplomatic points. Now the war itself, everything depends on the alliances of Granada. If they ally Morocco just blockade the strait on Ceuta, occupy free Granada and then maybe try to piecing out Morocco or maybe other allies if they have some, either for a white peace or just to break the alliances which will help you in the future wars in the northern Africa. Now, when you finish the war with Granada, you fully annex them and you are fulfilling a mission, which is giving you an event for Granada. Here you can choose between getting one stability, yes that's nice, or losing two stability but converting all of the Granadan provinces to Catholic. Here you could see that I've chosen the stability, which was a mistake, because if you convert those provinces to Catholic, even for two stability is worth, you are getting another mission that is giving you claims on the Northern Africa, which will make your expansion river even faster than I did. So right now in the 1450s, you should be getting event for the Iberian wedding. Felipe was really old so he should die in the meantime, you should get the regency and there during the regency you should get the event. If you do that, you are getting a mission to restore the union with the Portugal but you still have a truce, so you regain the union in a few years. Before that, you should consolidate your power and attack Morocco. In the war against Morocco, you should be getting the northern provinces. This war won't be easy, but if you get the Arabian wedding with the help of your vassals, you should be easily able to win that. The fort in Fez is tricky because those are mountains, but I believe in you guys. So in the war we are getting the northern provinces, the claims that we received from the mission, we are taking it for ourselves, but then we are releasing a vassal Fez and we are feeding this vassal with these provinces. After this war we are waiting a few years for the truce with the Portugal to end and in this war of course we are taking a personal union with them. If they in the meantime have taken exploration or expansion ideas that's amazing for you. So congratulations, at this point you should unite Iberia and get a huge part of the North Africa. Nice, in the meantime you are able to pick your first ideas and here everything depends on your strategy. Either way, I propose you taking something diplomatic. So if you are going for the new world and colonization, take exploration ideas. If you want for the diplomatic game in the Germany and expanding in Europe, I prefer either influence or diplomatic ideas. Both of them are giving you diplomatic reputation that is really needed here and diplomatic relations which is also needed for the electors. But the choice here is now if you want to get the annexation cost for the vassals from the influence ideas which would be needed or maybe the province war score costs from the diplomatic ideas. And also you should look on the both policies because it will depend on your long term game. And the second idea group which will be just a little bit later should be one of the administratives. If you want to go to the new world and colonize, you should choose expansion ideas, but if you want to stay in Europe and conquer over there, you should choose either administrative or religious ideas. I recommend taking religious ideas because it's giving you the best casus belli for you at this time, so the holy war, where you'll be able to attack every nation with a different religion without taking a diplo points hits when piecing out for some provinces. Now, what to do next after consolidating the power in Iberia and the Northern Africa? When you get Portugal and get the union with Aragon, now you have missions to get provinces in Italy. So you can easily expand over there by giving provinces to Naples. Just remember the aggressive expansion in Europe, especially when you want to go for the emperorship. Now, continuing your expansion in Northern Africa, you still should conquer by your missions and maybe a little bit more, and the promises that you're going to take, you should feed to your vassal Fez or Aragon. Remember, you're getting also Dragonese promises for free when forming Spain, just do not go over the limit of the promises that Aragon can take. Another tip over here is when you get on the war with the Tunis, just remember to get a border with the Mamluks, so in the future you'll be able to expand over there. So this is how your nation should look like in the 1470 or even earlier because I did not get the claims on the Africa on this run. And for the next steps here, if you're not going to go for the colonization, 
get the Mamluks down, get a province in the Red Sea, and in the meantime should get an event with the Explorer, we should, should use to get vision on India and China, where you can buy provinces for charging the companies. And thanks to that, you'll be able to expand over there, create the trade companies, and be really, really rich. Okay, so this is all for this guide. I hope this will be helpful for you to create a beautiful Spanish empire. And please say in comments if you have any better ideas for these steps, because there are definitely some better. But this should be really good for you. And thank you so much for watching. And please leave a like and comment and a subscription over here to boost this series up so you'll be able to prepare more videos like this. And I plan a couple of them. See ya!